Right, here we are again in uh, Pete's world of generator pain and suffering. Um, and we're going to look at, I don't think I will call it Pete's, no, I won't call it that. <coughs> it won't fit in the checkbook. Um, going to have a look at the, uh, the Honda EU26i and uh, some fault finding tips for uh, output problems and uh, those output problems sometimes can uh, spill over to manifest as uh, starting issues as well. Um, now I've chosen the EU26i uh, just because it seems to be the machine that people have most uh, difficulties with. Uh, and it's not uh, that there's anything wrong with the EU26i, there's no great flaw with it, just it's the way that they get used. People would choose an EU26i because it's big enough to start most equipment like um, fridges and freezers that have perhaps a, a quite high inrush current but their running current will be quite low so you might get a freezer that's only 400 watts but it might need a, a 2.4 kilowatt machine to actually get it started and then after about half a second all it needs is the 400 watts well, they get used a lot for these sorts of situations, burger wagons and that. They start the fridge and, uh, and then once that's done, they tick it over, just running the lights. And the fridge switches off and then it's just literally just the lights. So, now that can be a problem for any, any generator. Uh, I call it light loading, in that the load is nowhere near the rated load of the machine. Because the engine, the exhaust, the exhaust manifold, all of those parts never really get up to temperature. So the machine is running, uh, passing exhaust gases through the machine, but, but because the, uh, the, the, the muffler and the manifold and, and the head are not really getting up to temperatures, the exhaust gases tend to condense on the way through the machine and uh, the result is carbon deposits and oily deposits within the muffler, within the, within the head, within the, the manifold. So. Um, and that's a problem for any generator that need, you know, when they're lightly loaded. But for a, a machine like this, which has got eco throttle, and because it's a super silent machine, it's got a really large muffler on it that takes up most of the back of the machine. Well, there's a lot of metal to heat up in one of those mufflers. So a machine like the EU26i, as well as having a big muffler that takes a lot of heating up, so it makes a very good condenser for exhaust gases, it also spends a lot of its time because of eco throttle just ticking over so there's even less uh, temperature building up in the engine than you would get with a with a conventional machine that has to run at 3000 rpm all the time so then and when you see um, an output problem on one of these a burnt out stapler or a burnt out inverter pack it's almost always associated with low engine power caused either by a blockage for the airflow through the engine or sometimes also because the carburetor has become really dirty and it, again you're, you're, you're um, not getting full engine power and if you don't get full engine power the, the whole situation ricochets down the line and all the electronic components like the, um, the, the inverter pack and the stator as well are, are kind of fighting to make up the deficit they're becoming very stressed by trying to make power out of nothing effectively because the engine is not really capable of delivering the power properly so the solution right for all you people that haven't got a problem yet uh, is to make sure that periodically you run the machine at the full rated load say about one of these i don't know 2.4 kilowatts is it put that on it and just run it for 20 minutes say every every time you do an oil change do it and just give it a good run and after a while you'll put your hand somewhere near the back where the exhaust comes out not too close so you burn yourself and you'll feel little bits hitting your hand and they're bits of carbon that have been burnt out of the exhaust burnt out of the head burnt out of the um, manifold all being ejected from the machine and this is good so right, when you feel that just keep running the machine with the full continuous load on it um, until that, that stops happening and then effectively you've, you've decoked it and, uh, and that's really you, you, you've um, 
you'd like giving the machine a little service just by doing that to clean it all out and bring the power back up to the full potential so um, yeah but of course <clears throat> that doesn't always happen and you end up in this situation with a uh, with a problem on output now I've got here uh, I can just hear the courier has turned up outside, so just give me a moment while I go and deal with him. Uh, turn it up. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have a look at the um, the tests that you can do on this to determine exactly what's um, what's um, gone on if you've got no output. And the first part of uh, testing one of these is, is just to pull it over uh, on the recoil and listen as you pull it over, pull it over slowly and then pull it over fast but just listen to what's happening because sometimes uh, on, the, on the flywheel you've got magnets and sometimes if a magnet comes off or some magnets come off the flywheel you'll, you'll hear it as they, they scrape about when you pull it over this is, uh, this is a, a flywheel with the stator still in the middle because they stick themselves in like hell with the magnets but uh, we did have some EU-10Is earlier in the year where the cold weather had uh, got to them and made the, um, uh, the, um, the flywheel um, contract beyond the ability of the glue that holds the magnets on to, uh, to, um, to hold on the magnets. So, that, so we ended up with a situation where all the magnets had come off and stuck themselves onto the, onto the stator. So, um, but usually, you know, if you, you pull it over, and just give it a jerk and pull it over slowly. If you hear any scraping going on, it can be a clue that uh, you've got a problem with the flywheel. Uh, now, the other thing is when you're pulling it over, if it seems to be fantastically hard to pull over, um, obviously that could indicate an engine problem, but it could also indicate a problem with the inverter or possibly the, the stator but usually the inverter pack when they're really hard to pull over it can be because there's effectively a huge load already on the machine because you've got a short somewhere in the inverter pack and uh, the, the test of that one is see what it's like to pull over with everything connected and then disconnect the uh, the plug to the inverter pack and if it suddenly gets a lot easier then that's that's giving you a good clue. Now, sorry, that, that's me. That's me. Special gadget for holding open the door there. Put that back on. Okay. Now, the um, the next thing to do is to unplug the the wire that goes from the stator to the inverter pack and do a few tests. But just unplugging that wire in itself could be a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to show you what the plug looks like. So when you come to, just let me do some zooming. Now, I've got to try and find a, I'm looking at this on a monitor that reverses everything. So it's kind of, uh, there we go. There you can see, this is the plug that plugs one end on the inverter, on the uh, stator. And this part plugs into the back of the inverter pack. And you'll see on the top of it, there. You've got a, a gizmo, like right, a clip thing. Well, when this is in the machine, you'll see, you'll see where it is. It's kind of just in front of the air filter. And uh, I can just I'll take my camera off it. Oh, too, I'll just drag the stand down because I'm a bit of a crap cameraman, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to move that sound on that. That's it. Right, now... Uh, Okay, now you can actually see the plug there. Well, I've already unplugged one in the machine, but I'll just put it where it would live so you can see. And I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, let's try that. Uh, zooming in, terrible camera work. Uh, we're generator technicians, not Spielberg. 